Let's take a look at the 2006 World Cup All-Star squad of the tournament and yes, it was a squad of 23 players. Gianluigi Buffon, a World Cup winner in 2006, what has Gianluigi Buffon got up to since then? Well, he stuck it out of Juventus for another 12 years, including a spell in Serie B after that relegation that season. If you think that's bad, he also had to spend 12 months watching John Lang Boomsong try to defend. That's enough to put any goalkeeper into a mental hospital. Buffon has won 7 league titles in a row and now looks to be about to see out his remaining days at PSG, spending his free time raking in massive paychecks and writing love letters to Michael Oliver. Jens Lehmann. Jens Lehmann always seemed to be a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic, didn't he? The German number one, possibly the only man on planet Earth not to be intimidated by the gurning Oliver Kahn, was a spot kick hero for Germany as they reached the semi-finals in 2006. He left Arsenal in 2008, took in two years at Stuttgart, before returning to the Gunners in 2011 for one game as a 41 year old, because things had gotten that desperate. He's currently part of the Arsenal coaching setup. Ricardo. Forever remembered for ruining Darius Vassell's life in 2004, who saves a penalty without gloves? Ricardo went on to spend four years at Real Betis before being reunited with both Vassell and Sven Joran Eriksson at Leicester City in 2011. Surprised he wasn't booed out of the stadium. He retired in Portugal three years later. Gianluca Zambrata. Gianluca Zambrata was a top fullback. He traded Juventus for Barcelona following their demotion in 2006, signed for AC Milan in 2008, and then retired in 2014 at FC Chiazzo. Currently assistant boss at Jiangsu Suning. Roberto Ayala. A no nonsense Argentine defender, the centre half who scored against Germany but also missed a penalty in the quarterfinals, retired with 115 caps to his name. John Terry. One of the few men in this list who's still playing, but surely not for much longer. Since 2006, Terry has won some more trophies, pulled off a world famous slip, and I don't mean slipping into his friend's wife, allegedly of course. He then went on to make up for Moscow by putting in a man of the match display in Munich as he led Chelsea to victory four years later. Or at least that's what he'll probably try to tell his grandkids when he gets out the photo album. You just know he'd be the only bridesmaid to wear a veil at his sister's wedding. Anyway, since being cheerled off the Stamford Bridge turf like last night's prom queen, he's taken in a season at Aston Villa and now could be signing for for Derby County as Curtis Davies' replacement. Bet he never thought he'd be saying that. Ricardo Carvalho. Well, it would seem rude not to have John Terry's club partner in here, wouldn't it? Although the Portuguese was the one who came out on top when they faced off in the quarterfinals, although practically being chemically castrated by a clumsy scouser probably wasn't a tactic he planned for. Carvalho left Chelsea for Real Madrid in 2010 and then signed for Monaco in 2013. He retired last year at Shanghai. Lillian Thoram. 142 caps, 2 goals, both in a World Cup semi-final in 1998. Some man to pick his timing, Lillian. Yes, this man might have been given an unfortunately girly first name that wouldn't have sounded out of place in a convent, but Thoram was undoubtedly a defensive great of the game. Unlike Buffon, however, he didn't fancy sticking it out for a stint in Serie B with Juventus and saw out the final two years of his career at Barcelona instead. He's currently a UNICEF ambassador and has since fought for the legalisation of same-sex marriage and has been vociferous in his content elimination of racism. Fabio Cannavaro. It seems unheard of for a 5'9 defender to be winning the World Cup, less still the Ballon d'Or, but this was an era where that award wasn't just used in the eternal game of hot potato between these two lads. Like Thoram, Cannavaro left Juventus in 2006, spending three uninspired years at Real Madrid. He returned with his tail firmly between his legs in 2009 to a Juventus side which were continuing their slow rehabilitation. And boy, was it slow. Sure, they lost 4 1 to Fulham that season. Being run ragged by Bobby Zamora was not Cannavaro's idea of a swan song. He retired at Al Ali and has since managed Al Nasser, Tianjin Quan Jin, and Guangzhou Evergrande. That man must have cash leaking out of his eyeballs. Philip Lam. Philip Lam was just 22 at this tournament and he suddenly made his mark, building in the opening goal of the tournament after just six minutes. The German hobbit went on to see out his career at Bayern Munich, winning pretty much everything you can think of before retiring at the inexplicably early age of 33. Save Roberto. Another Bayern Munich hero, as Roberto was a hit for Brazil during the 2006 World Cup. He's been a journeyman ever since, signing for Santos, Bayern again, Hamburg, Al Jarafa, Gremio and Palmeiras before retiring last year at 43 years of age. See Philip, you could have had another decade. Patrick Vieira. It had been a year since Patrick Vieira had signed for Juventus and Arsenal were probably still wondering how they are going to replace him. It's been 12 years since. Try harder, lads. Little did Vieira know he just walked into a club slipping into Serie B, so he was packing his bags in 2006 for Inter Milan, where he did exactly what he'd expected to do in Turin, dominate Italy. Then he returned to England via Man City before being kept on as a coach. Since 2016, he's managed New York City and has been linked with the likes of Newcastle, Arsenal and most recently Nice. Zinedine Zidane. Jesus, what hasn't this lad done? He was the talk of the summer in 2006 after shoving his dome into Matarazzi's chest. Think how many memes that would have spawned nowadays. He's since spent the last decade 
telling anyone who would listen that he'd not him again if given the chance. Coach Real Madrid Castilla won three consecutive Champions Leagues and a league title for the first team before tipping his hat and walking away from the only club mad enough to think about sacking him in November. Michael Ballack. Another international tournament, another near miss for Michael Ballack who really should have finished his career with more medals. In 2006 he became one of the most lucrative free agents in the world when he swapped Bayern Munich for Chelsea, spent four years there before retiring in 2012 at Bayer Leverkusen. Andrea Perlo. Why AC Milan let this man go for free in 2011 is yet another example of that club's incredible self-destructive pattern. Suppose it makes sense when your owner was Silvio Berlusconi. Juventus picked him up, Perlo lifted a bunch of league titles to break Milanese hearts before sitting an English heart on his arse and then going on to see out the final few years at New York City. Gennaro Gattuso. The snarling rhino Gennaro Gattuso finally left AC Milan in 2012, retiring at Swiss club FC Sion. Well, it was there that he started his management career, which has led him back to AC Milan. Manish. Considering the hype surrounding this player, Manish turned out to be a real disappointment. The Portuguese mouse looked like a goal scoring machine in a Portuguese jersey, but flopped at Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, Inter Milan, and most recently Sporting Lisbon. Luis Figo. A legend of Portuguese football, although he probably still wakes up in the dead of night getting PTSD flashbacks of pig heads. He retired in 2009 at Inter Milan and six years later tried to run against Sepp Blatter for FIFA president. A smart decision, considering at that point a peeled orange could have run against Sepp Blatter and it would have probably won. Figo had a change of heart though. Hernan Crespo. A much travelled goal scorer, it's weird to think Hernan Crespo was officially on the Chelsea books for five years when he spawned four of those in Milan. He left the city in 2009, seeing out the final three years of his career both Genoa and Parma, before taking in a brief stint as manager of Medina, and then cutting his hair and becoming the new host of Top Gear. Thierry Henry. The Frenchman left Arsenal for Barcelona in 2007 for 16 million pounds, the same amount that Darren Bent left Charlton for that week. Oh dear. He then went on to win a bunch of trophies, cheat our country out of a World Cup. No hard feelings, eh? God, I hate you, Thierry. Before seeing out his days at New York Red Bulls, which is like a 15-year-old playing football against a bunch of blind 9-year-olds. He currently juggles the Belgian assistant manager's job with boring the nation and touching up Jamie Carragher on Sky Sports. Miroslav Klose, World Cup legend. Top scorer at the tournament with 16 goals. Miroslav Klose is an absolute hero, retiring with 71 goals and 137 caps. Considering he was never a world beater at club level, that's quite extraordinary. He's currently part of the German coaching staff. Francesco Totti, a World Cup villain in 2006 as far as the Aussies are concerned. Francesco Totti ended up sticking out at Roma until the bitter end, retiring last year at 40 years of age after 25 years at the club. Luca Toni, this man was just bizarre. Luca Toni had 15 transfers in his career, but just when he seemed to be winding down, seemed to have a purple patch or something. Having won the European Golden Shoe with 31 goals for Fiorentina, it all looked to have petered out for him 9 years later, when he was 38 at Verona and had scored 13 goals in his previous 4 years. But no, he battered in 42 league goals in Serie A over 2 seasons, claiming the Golden Boot during the 14-15 season, despite being 2 years off his 40th birthday. He retired a year later. So man, 